Apple yesterday has officially revealed the M2 MacBook Air, and it looks absolutely stunning. Now on the website, Apple is still selling the M1 MacBook Air, and I've been using it for three or two months now, and I absolutely love the M1. And that leads me on to this video. Which MacBook Air should you buy, the M1 or the M2? Now, before we get into that, make sure you guys click on that beautiful red subscribe button. Help me reach the 200,000 subscribers. Drop like on this video and share this video with your friends. It's much appreciated. Right away, the M2 MacBook Air is featuring the same redesign that we got with the 14 inch and the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So it's featuring a squared off, boxed off design, going away of this wedge design hinge this is going to be an iconic design so i think this is something i'm going to probably keep in the collection for a long time you also have magsafe for charging alongside with two uh thunderbolt ports so this is actually a good thing because you can use the magsafe to charge a macbook and then you have your two thunderbolt ports to connecting your peripherals versus with the m1 you only have two thunderbolts one could be used for charging and then you only have one left to connect your peripherals you even have four gorgeous finishes such as midnight starlight space gray and silver i absolutely love the midnight finish but just know that everybody's gonna get that one but i think my second color that i'll go with is starlight this is such a clean colors a hint of gold and silver a little bit as a hybrid and I am going to do a comparison comparing gold versus starlight. That's going to be an interesting comparison. And the display is actually bigger coming in at 13.6 inches opposed to 13 inches. And it's featuring that liquid retina display. It's not an XDR display. And yes, you do have the infamous, the iconic notch. But really the brains with the new MacBook Air is that M2 chip. Apple is totally dominating the silicon game. We just had the M1 Ultra and now here we are with the M2 and we know that Apple is working on the Mac Pro uh, featuring with that last M1 chip. You guys are probably thinking, what about the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra? Is the M2 faster than those devices? No. Now Apple didn't even show any charts or graphs comparing the M1 Pro or the M1 Max to the M2. But according to Apple, this is 1.4 times faster than M1 and a whopping up to 15 times faster than the Intel base model. So I think this is really aimed towards people who still have Intel, who hasn't completely transitioned to Apple Silicon just yet. Um, just know you're gonna appreciate this. That laptop is not gonna run hot. This is fanless, by the way. Everything is more efficient. It just, it makes sense to have it on the air. You have improvements to video editing, 1.4 times faster. So if you're gonna be doing a little bit of YouTube on the side, you can get some work done. The GPU is 35% faster than the M1. That is bizarre, 35% times faster. The CPU speed is only 18%, that's still good, but 35% faster GPU, that's, that's pretty nuts. But all in all, it's just a better chip. Not to say that the M1 is terrible. I think the M1 is going to be good for most people who's buying the MacBook Air. The M2 is just taking it a step further. Now, if you take it over to the Apple website, you have two M2 MacBook Airs to choose from. You have one that starts at $1,200, and then you have the other one that starts at $1,500, which is a little expensive for a MacBook Air, if you ask me. Typically, for a MacBook Air, the best route to go is the base model but you are getting a Ben version of M2. And I mean by Ben, essentially it's a, I wouldn't say it's broken, but it's a, 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 a it's a slower M2 opposed to the high-end model. You have, you have a high-end model of the M2. So that's what I mean by Ben. But on the high-end model, you have a 35 dual USB-C charge and brick included. Uh, so it's like you could charge an iPhone and then you could charge a MacBook or an iPad. I appreciate the dual charging port. 35 watts but i use this anytime i travel i use this charger this is from anchor i throw a link in the description it has two type c ports and it's so much more smaller too compared to the apple one so it's not really a big deal to get the high-end one just to get that charging brick it's not necessary oh and i forgot to mention the magsafe cable is color coordinated depending on which model you go with that's pretty neat i wish i would have done that with the macbook pro if you get a space gray MacBook Pro, give us a space gray MagSafe. The webcam has been upgraded to 1080p, but at this point, that don't really matter because you can use your iPhone as a webcam now, thanks to Mac OS, uh, <laughs> Mac OS, what's the name of that thing? I, Mac OS Ventura. Yeah, I had to look it up real quick on my iPad mini. I typically will go with the base model if you get in the air. Not only are you getting it right there in the store, but the problem with the MacBook Air that I always have 
the ram the ram is terrible eight gigabytes of ram in 2022 is not enough all laptops should start at least with 16 gigabytes of ram whatever you a basic user or a high-end user like me eight gigs is not enough you can open up maybe like one to three apps depending on how intensive those apps are and that's it your, your system is slowing down so what i recommend get at least 16 gigabytes of ram um you don't even have to mess with the m2 chip i think for most people the base should be just fine uh and even with the storage even though that's still low at 256 gigabytes that is not a big issue because you can get external hard drives i highly recommend the samsung t7 and it's way cheaper than what apple is charging here you, you know the step up to 512 just 512 is 200 dollars and then a one terabyte is a whopping 400 dollars you can get an external hard drive for so much cheaper and even me as a video editor i always get the base storage one terabyte and i just store my finished projects on the external hard drive so yeah and the ram is something that you're gonna live with because you gotta understand you're gonna have potentially you could have this laptop for years to come so the RAM is something that you want to really be serious because eight gigs is not enough. Speaking from experience, using the M1 MacBook Air with eight gigs, it's going to slow down really quickly. You're going to find yourself needing to close out apps and that can get super annoying because let's say you need Safari to be open and, and you need to have this one open. It can get annoying very quickly. So RAM, you just have more space to have apps running in the background while keeping the speed. At least the high-end model should have 16 gigabytes of RAM. For $1,500 and you're giving me 8 gigs, that's still, that's kind of low. The base model, okay, fine. But the high-end model, still with 8 gigabytes of RAM, mm, nah. That's basically all I want to discuss here. I cannot wait to get the M2 MacBook Air in the studio. Of course, I'm going to be, as a tradition, I'm going to be getting all the colors. Midnight, Starlight, Space Gray, Silver, all the colors just to compare it just to make a video, just to help you guys out. Um, and yeah, that, that's just my goal. I'm just here to help you guys make a decision, help you guys with tech. I enjoy doing this. Why not click on that beautiful red subscribe button? Help me reach the 200,000 subscribers. Drop a like on this video. Comment down below what you guys think about the M2 MacBook Air. This is pretty good because now the tech community is finally out of this drought a little bit because now we have iOS 16, iPad OS, Mac OS, new mac products and then tomorrow we have the mw2 reveal i could make a video on that then we have the playstation plates coming out so finally the tech community is out of this drought and now we lit again it's all right guys thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys have a simple day peace